Hi, this is Nicholas Snow, and welcome to NicholasSnow.tv. The 2015 Palm Springs International Short Fest, the largest short film festival and only short film market in North America, announced its festival award winners on Sunday, June 21st, 2015. 330 short films screened throughout the festival, along with more than 3,000 filmmaker submissions available in the film market. More than $115,000 in prizes, including $20,000 in cash awards, were awarded in 21 categories. Held from June 16th through the 22nd, 2015, the festival had another record-breaking year in attendance for ticket buyers, filmmakers, and film industry delegates. I was on hand as I usually am each year to cover the festival, and this year I was experimenting in shooting Periscope videos. So the videos that are, you're about to watch uh, were broadcast live initially to anyone that happened to tune in and now I am sharing them for you here. I basically have compiled all of my Periscope videos throughout the festival in uh, chronological order. Keep in mind um, my thought as I was creating them was to capture the audio, to uh, convey the excitement and the energy. So it's not going to be the same experience as watching a highly produced television broadcast, but I am honored to have been able to capture at least this much, especially for the memories of the filmmakers, especially those filmmakers who were not in attendance. Good evening, uh, my name is Harold Matzner and I have the honor to be the chairman of the uh, Palm Springs International Film Society, uh, which presents this event. And uh, on behalf of my board of directors, I want to welcome you uh, to Shortfest. <laughs> 700 writers, directors, producers, and actors from all over the world are coming to Shortfest this week. For a young filmmaker, getting into this Shortfest is like getting into Carnegie Hall. Everything before it was just practice. Now they're getting to see who <coughs> among their peers has set the standard they need to meet. Can they set the bar even higher? This attitude is what makes Shortfest not only the biggest short film festival in the United States, but the best. That is what this festival is all about. This festival is learning how to up your game. Attend our forums over the weekend at the Renaissance Hotel and talk to experts about casting, directing, and cinematography. You can get master classes from the pros and get tips from industry leaders who have been there, done that, including Jason Reitman, who got his start at this festival before going on to direct films like Juno and Up in the Air. This is your ticket to be programmers from other film festivals who can tell you what it takes to get into their festivals from Sundance to Tribeca. You can listen to the guy who created the Hollywood Blacklist, which tracks the best unproduced scripts, and find out what Hollywood development executives are looking for in a script. Shortfest is a $500,000 educational investment in the future of young filmmakers, and we are proud to play this role in the evolution of the filmmakers of tomorrow. Every filmmaker should go to our parties. I go to them, I mean, they're really fun. But uh, for young filmmakers, <clears throat> the parties are um, every night, and it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity to network with hundreds of their peers. I would call it an invaluable experience. Bruce Fezier of The Vendor's Sun just printed a long list of filmmakers who have gone on to make it big in feature films after starting at this short test. 
Just a few of those directors who have returned to our Palm Springs festivals are Ava Duvernay of uh, the wonderful film Selma, Aaron Snyder of Get Low, and our friend Jason Whiteman, who likes to come to Palm Springs to write his scripts. So we're ready to feel the excitement these young people are about to bring to our city. On a different note, my dear friends, Rosine and Rick Supple, built this theater specifically for Short Fest and our January feature film. We always will be deeply in their debt for this wonderful screening venue. And now I would like to introduce our Film Society's executive director is also festival director of Short Fest and one of the leading creative experts in the world of film, Baron Plant. Good evening and welcome. It's so wonderful to be able to welcome you to the 21st Palm Springs International um, Short Fest. Those years whizzed by uh, over 101, uh, actually exactly 101 Oscar nominees have emerged out of Short Fest uh, to get uh, nominations for the Academy Awards for Best Short. And countless great filmmakers have made their way into the major world, or the world of major filmmaking uh, after coming to Short Fest, it's uh, just something wonderful to know that you've been a part of all that um, for so many years. And the fact that this festival has been going strong for 21 years and going from strength to strength over the course of those 21 years is, is a, 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 a truly rewarding thing. Uh, I obviously need to thank the festival staff who've labored long months to put together a memorable and endlessly enjoyable program of screenings, forums, and special events for both our audience and all of those filmmakers who will grace us with their presence over the course of this coming week. Alongside them, we owe a huge debt of thanks to our volunteers, who have had countless hours of hard work and dedication to the true labor of love this festival has become. I'd also especially like to thank our generous sponsors for their unstinting support uh, and here to pay due homage to them is our Director of Development. Please welcome Harriet Barron. Hi everyone. It's always my pleasure to acknowledge our sponsors uh, without whom nothing would happen. Uh, this really is my pleasure. Um, and here with a sponsor's tale, Short Fest 2015. It all started in the city of Palm Springs under a setting desert sun at Peabody's Cafe, located in the lobby of the Renaissance Hotel. Struggling actress Stella Artois was I know I'm getting predictable. Was, <laughs> was sipping a Pepsi and quickly emptying a bag of Frito made chips while reading a script she'd been given by her agent. A very cool cat that everyone knew only as Mr. Lyons. It was a monster role, a career-making role, in fact. She would play a diplomat from the Swiss consulate. Her character, Muna Riviera, was a real firecracker, in a way that only babes can be. The production, a shift for a cop in the film, would be first class all the way. Television cameras, casting would be handled by the Casting Society of America, Catering by Spencer's Restaurant and location shoots in Australia, France, Quebec, and Belgium. She hadn't been on location since her days of film school. Shorts were her forte then, but not anymore. She newly read the script, diving into a stash of Brandini toffee she had had in the bottom of her travel host bag she was given six months earlier on a commercial shoot. The shoot highlighted the Palm Springs life and was shot at the Ace Hotel and Swim Club. Her career was at a low point then. My earnings and my looks are about to sag, independent of one another. <laughs> I'm never going to get another Lulu of a movie we're all still about the time. But something about the title of this script, Keep Your Hansons <coughs> Off My Toucan, told her it might set a new standard for her career and not in a good way. 
Even with a great performance, would the film go right to On Demand in hotel rooms at the Hilton, the Hyatt, or the Courtyard by Marriott? She pondered these questions as she read on, switching to Tito's and wonderful pistachios. How could she know if the script was the hit she wanted it to be, if this was her big chance to find a place in the sun, be all the rage, and finally break into the Coachella Valley art scene? Despite, <laughs> despite the fact the LA studio executives were not in a stampede to get to her, this still required a lot of thought. She was grateful to have somebody to fall back on just in case. Her front desk job at the Hard Rock Hotel and recording jingles for the Greater Palm Springs Convention and Visitors Bureau, which aired on Desert Radio Group stations. But she couldn't help but wonder, would the jingles hurt her acting career? She tried, <laughs> she tried to keep a positive desert outlook. <laughs> An audition was scheduled with the director, who had a flair for creating radiant images. He had just wrapped on a smart source CRE co-production for TV5 Long, entitled Icelandic Glacial, A Stone Cold Story of Love and Hydration. <laughs> Hundreds of actresses showed up at Jensen Studios to read for the part. So many, in fact, that news crews from KESQ and KPSP Local 2 showed up just to cover it. Stella entered the audition room with a trio of actresses, immediately recognized the director as someone earnest. Coffee in the hand was a giveaway. She felt better about the role immediately. It would be like a vacation Palm Springs if she would get this role. She'd celebrate at Sparrow's Lodge in Aspen Mills. The director set up the scene. So your character and her fiancé, Alcazar, who is an HD video pro, are away for the weekend at the beautiful Los Arbolas Hotel, nestled at the foot of Palm Mountain. Suddenly, he tells you he's breaking off your engagement because he's too devoted to his career at KMIR. Now start with the line, but I've already booked video blocks to film the wedding and written a wedding announcement for CV Weekly in Telemundo Palm Springs. Are, are you talking to me? Stella stammered nervously. KUSC? that I'm talking to you, the director asked Stella, in his accented English, just as their eyes met. Everyone in the room realized in that moment that it was useless to even audition. The director had found his Luna Vari Riviera and so much more. Stella got the part, the director, and thanks to the movie's success, a career that was hotter than the ads in the lesbian news. <laughs> So remember that the next time someone wants to put their hands in on your two cans, it might just be your lucky day. Shameless, just shameless. You know, either you need an editor or, or we need a few responses, and I know we don't need a few responses. Uh, <laughs> But don't quit your day job. Um, finally, if you'll pardon my twist on an old-fashioned aphorism, I'm sorry, the length of a film has very little to do with its quality. Um, and the quality of the film has everything to do with the strength of the storytelling involved. The best films, like life, provide us with a series of indelible images and teach us something, either about ourselves or about the world. We've spent the better part of these last six months combing through a huge cache of short films, 3,400 in all, to put together a lineup of what we consider to be the most inspiring, provocative, entertaining, and just plain exceptional examples of great short filmmaking from all over the world. And we're blessed tonight to have a number of the artists who have created those indelible indelible images here with us. Um, I'd like to ask all of the filmmakers who are here with us in the auditorium tonight to please stand up and be recognized. Thank you so much for all the great work you brought us. Uh, among this gifted group of storytellers are six, actually I just found out coming in five, no six, of the key creative talents who have provided us with the films on view in the festival opener um, tonight to make them laugh. And it's my great pleasure to introduce them to you now on stage. Um, 
please let's start by welcoming Adriano Valentini, the director of the Age of Security Little Man, and also Enchego, uh, which will be shown later in the talk. Um, thank you so much for having us. We, uh, we had a film here last year, part of the same series called The Agent of Security. We had a great time. It was my favorite festival, so just really happy to be back. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, here with one of my favorite films in the entire festival, uh, director Alexis von Stratum uh, with Albertine. Alexis? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm very glad and very proud to be here tonight. Um, I had a dream to make a movie with elderly people, and I met two beautiful actors, Jacqueline and Bernard, and so uh, I think of them tonight, and um, I'm very, very glad to show you my work. Enjoy. Um, next up with a film that's, well, Dizzy beyond belief. Uh, please welcome director Michael Phyllis and producer Alexa Fraser Heron with uh, Mini Supreme. Yeah. Thank you so much. We're very proud to be making our world premiere here at the Palm Springs Short Fest. Um, we're from San Francisco, where our movie was born and raised. Thank you. Yeah. 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 We got a couple of folks from the film here with us tonight. Our associate producer and one of our evil pageant mobs, Nancy French, is here. And uh, our choreographer and my partner in life, Rory Davis, is here. And uh, our uh, costume designer and the creator of all the crazy stuff you're about to see, Amy Sarazen. Our movie is uh, dedicated to all the boys that wanted to wear the dress, <laughs> all the girls who didn't, and uh, all the folks that came in second place. Thank you. And uh, finally, um, with the wonderful, wonderful film Warning Labels, uh, we have with us tonight both the uh, editor, John Wells, and the producer, A.J. Kelly. Hey, everybody. Uh, we're, we were so happy to be here tonight, and uh, you know, I, I'm actually the editor, Joe Hall, AJ <laughs> Kelly. Um, uh, Jen asked me to speak for, for her tonight, and she so wishes she could be here, um, but I know she's super excited uh, to have her West Coast premiere here. Um, I met her on Once Upon a Time as an editor on there, and I just was very excited to um, work with her, because she's super smart and super talented, and I just Hope you guys enjoy the movie because I know we, we as a team are excited to have the movie players. Thank you. All right, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the lesbian package. Uh, maybe not. I'm Jim, I'm a pre-screener for the film festival. I'm actually pitch hitting for Daryl, who had a last minute thing at the office. So he will be here uh, after the screening and he is the director of the festival. So he'll be excited to uh, conduct the Q&A with the filmmakers. Uh, first and foremost, we would like to thank our title sponsor, the city of Palm Springs, as well as all of our sponsors will be up on the screen. We uh, hope that you will support them. They have so generously supported us. Uh, also thank the volunteers who are wearing these lovely orange shirts. Uh, we couldn't do this festival without them. Thanks. Uh, so, the gala. We've got filmmakers in the house, I believe. I'd like them to come up. Are they here? Yeah.
While they're making their way up, uh, just a few housekeeping. Please turn off your cell phones. No texting. If you text during the movie, I will find you. Um, also vote. Voting is important. Uh, these filmmakers have worked really hard and they have beat out a lot of films to make it here. So if they do really well with an audience vote, you never know what could happen. They could do uh, bigger, better things as far as maybe get considered for an Oscar. All right? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass the mic down. I would just like to in have you introduce your name, what country you're from, what your uh, film is, and uh, that's it. And then we'll have you come back up after uh, the, the package. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Fang Fan. Come from uh, China. Uh, our movie is uh, The Forgiven. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jonathan Waisaki. My film is Just a Dream. I come from the country of Silver Lake, Los Angeles. <laughs> and uh, this is the first time I'm seeing this film with a primarily gay audience, which I'm sure we're excited about. So. G'day, uh, my name is Ryder Grindle. I'm from Australia, and uh, my film's called Criticism. Uh, hi, I'm Nate Clark, and this is my partner, Alan Loeb, and we're here from West Hollywood, California, <laughs> close to Silver Lake, uh, with somewhere in Palm Springs. <clears throat> hi, everyone. My name is Michael Phyllis. I'm the writer-director of Mini Supreme. I'm Alexa Fraser-Heron. I don't usually sound this froggy. I am officially the Little Mermaid of indie film. Um, and I am the producer of Mini Supreme. Thank you. Uh, I'm Nick Chacon. I'm from Vancouver, and I made the feature perfect. Uh, thank you, guys. So that's it. Enjoy the show. Check out my website, nicholassnowlive.com. This cupcake can will be performing a couple of numbers for you this evening. So let's give it up now for Cupcake Cam! Thank you. 
edition of Palm Springs International Short Fest. Um, it's great to see so many smiling faces here tonight. Wait a minute, you're not smiling. Smile. Um, and uh, one of the greatest things about Short Fest, uh, certainly for us as programmers, I'm sorry, I'm Daryl McDonald, I'm the director of the Palm Springs International Film Festival. Thank you. So one of our favorite things um, about this festival in particular is the discovery of new talent. It, uh, it's a source of continual amazement that there is so much gifted uh, new talent, uh, not just directors, actors, actresses, uh, screenwriters, cameramen, editors, uh, emerging uh, here in America and indeed all over the world. Um, and uh, we've seen a ton of it at this year's film festival. Uh, tonight's film, uh, pardon me, tonight's package, uh, as it has been in the last five years, is dedicated to talent both in front of and behind the camera, and uh, in particular star power in front of and behind the camera, because it's never been clearer than it has in the last half decade that there are a lot of very well-known actors and actresses getting involved in the world of short film, again, both in front of and behind the camera. Um, for directors, it's uh, particularly easy for somebody who has a name and has created box office in the feature film world to get a short film financed. You know, in, in rare cases like that of uh, Mel Gibson and... Uh, God, I'm going blank, Dancing with Wolves. Uh, thank you, Kevin Costner. To be able to actually get a feature film financed oh, uh, on the strength of their name, particularly if they agree to uh, start the else. film as well. That hasn't, uh, well, that's rarely the case with, with uh, women uh, it, behind the camera, or pardon me, in front of the camera in film, uh, actresses who have gone on to be able to get a, an actual feature film financed uh, <coughs> the director. Um, one of the responses to this, uh, in a number of cases, is um, great actresses uh, actually getting a short film financed so they can show what they can do, as is the case uh, tonight with the short films we have directed by Katie Holmes, by Bryce Dallas Howard, and Tara Fitzgerald. Um, in other cases, it's just uh, a, a fact that talent attracts talent. And in the case of the other four films on the program tonight, we have uh, some very well-known actors and actresses uh, performing in films by unknown directors. And that's because those actors uh, recognized the talent in these directors and wanted to stretch their muscles um, as actors and um, agreed to uh, join a short film and work on a project they believed in with an actor or pardon me, a director who they also believed in. I'm delighted that we have, in fact, four of those directors here with us tonight. And uh, I'd like to introduce them to you now. I'll start with uh, the director of The Scarecrow, uh, a really moving film about, uh, well, a couple who's already come apart uh, dealing with the aftermath. Uh, director Philip Rise, The Scarecrow. Philip, can you come up? <laughs> Philip, come on up. Just say a few words by way of introduction to your film. Hello. Uh, yes, I'm an actor actually, and this is my first narrative short I've directed. And um, Sandra O oh, Darren Petty's in it, and Sandra Seacat, Alexander Guda. Uh, Twelve minutes of a story about a man who's basically recently divorced and how he just reassimilates in a, a new life his relationship with the wife, the ex-wife, his son, and also himself. You'll see, I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> it's exclusively me. Next up with a very twisted little comedy uh, called The Assistant, starring Janine Garoppolo. Uh, please welcome director Julie Cohen. Thank 
you so much. This has been a wonderful What's experience with awesome. this whole festival. Um, so I'm not going to tell you about the film, but Janine Garofalo stars in it, and she's one of my personal heroes. Um, and I grew up with her in the 90s. And um, I wrote this little film with um, my boyfriend, uh, and I, because I had been doing some stand-up comedy, um, was able to meet her and ask her if she would be in this movie. And she not, not only said yes after reading the script, but she also said that she would not do it for any money. And um, she's based in New York, and I'm based in LA. So she, she asked if, if it would be okay if she stayed with me. <laughs> and I was like, that is a 90s Julie dream come true. Like, this is I just everything. Uh, so I... I lived a, a crazy weekend. We actually did it over Thanksgiving because it was the only time that she wasn't going to get paid work. And um, we had a little uh, movie Thanksgiving. And uh, we wrapped early that day and stuff. And um, it was an amazing experience. And through, uh, I think, Janine signing on, I was able to get a lot of other amazing stand-up comics. And uh, many of them are here tonight. So. Uh, the co-star in the movie is Joe Wenger. Joe <laughs> is right over there. <laughs> You'll see he's amazing, and he keeps up with her unbelievably. Um, and a, a, a lot of the other actresses are here as well. Um, Tess Barker and Megan Keister. So they're all comedians, and they have amazing um, comedy careers and are, are famous within the scene of Los Angeles. Um, and so anyway, if you recognize anybody from the film later on, talk to them because they're really interesting and you'll want to follow their careers. All right, I've already talked way too much, but thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next up with a terrific uh, Western, uh, well, how about vengeance, uh, with an amazing uh, cast of actors. Uh, from The Weight of Blood and Bones, please welcome director Christopher Eckstein. Christopher. Thank you so much for being here. Um, this is just an amazing day for me, uh, promoting this film. Um, I'm, my background, I'm a cinematographer, and this is my first time uh, really presenting my work as a director. Um, and I can't think of a better place to do it than here at the Palm Springs Film Festival. So thank you all. Um, I had the great, amazing, uh, really great opportunity to, to work with Jason Patrick in this film. And he's an incredible actor. Um, at first he wasn't able to do it, and then he decided that he, he would give it a shot and, and, and he really put all of his amazing talents into it. Uh, because of him, uh, Rose McGowan decided to, to come out and play for a day. Um, and she was an amazing person to work with. Uh, she, you know, it was 105 degree heat and she had this velvet dress and she didn't complain at all. Um, and then we had the amazing Danny Trejo, uh, who's Machete, who came out and he loves Westerns and he had the best, so much fun. Um, and then Mark Boone Jr. from Sons, Sons of Anarchy, who's Bobby Elvis. And he was supposed to come tonight, but he couldn't make it, so. Uh, but thank you so much and it's just such, such a pleasure to be here. And uh, finally, uh, from a film called Miss Famous, which uh, happens to feature a few famous faces, um, of course, Kristen Wiig, uh, and also Jimmy Kimmel. Sorry for the typo in the book that says uh, Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> we will never let that down. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, our director is a forgiving type. Please welcome Shade Lamar Smith. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming today. So, Miss Famous is basically a collaborative project between myself, L.A. Ross, who's our producer, and Roxanne Beck, who's our screenwriter. And it was done through the UCLA initiative with James Franco. 
And um, Miss Davis basically tells the story of Monica, a woman who fantasizes about a life um, far beyond her current reality and situation. Um, Miss uh, Monica is actually played by Chris Wig and is also starring Jimmy Kimmel and Tony Cox, who you may know from Bad Santa. The filmmakers of the short film festival are standing for a very deserved applause. about the focus issue. I have no control over it. It's a function of the lighting. Another photo off. those photos. Let's make a speech. Zealous. 
And someone's getting up in the front row. is here. short over 15 minutes Paris on the water from Israel is had us known here okay um, we will accept it on his behalf and uh, congratulations Her. I'm sorry Her. Okay, let's see what's next. Check out psfilmfest.org. Before we go to the uh, Nun Student Awards, uh, we're going to show you two of the films that just won, Murder Rosa and Sword. I'll be back with part two of the award presentation, so follow me at the Nicholas Snow. And look, next up is our short film awards announcement. Uh, they'll be presented by David Anson, a journalist, or the journalist who's been lead film critic for 31 years and the Artistic Director of the Los Angeles Film Festival from 2010 through 2014. Greg Kilday, the film editor of The Hollywood Reporter, who's also written for Vanity Fair, The LA Times, Rolling Stone, and Esquire, amongst others. And Roberta Monroe, Home Spring Short Festival alumni, and the author of Secrets from the Sundance Programmer. 
This is part two, find part one on my Twitter feed, at the Nicholas Snow, but stay tuned to this live broadcast. Good evening, everyone. Um, it was our pleasure, I think I speak on behalf of Greg, David, and myself, to say that we had such a wonderful time watching all of your work, and I'm sure you know that you're all winners. However, we did have to choose them. Uh, I am here to present the best animated short, and the runner-up in the best animated film category receives a $500 cash award and the festival's second place certificate. <coughs> Our runner-up was the orchestra from Australia. Directed by <laughs> The filmmakers are here, but while they're coming to the stage, I want to let you know that the awards are broken up in three or four segments. I'll broadcast them all live for up to 24 hours. You can find them on my Twitter feed at the Nicholas Snow. First, the photo ops. Uh, clean underwear now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reference to part one. I want you gotta to check it out. Uh, Palm Springs for, um, for having us. It was a fantastic festival. Uh, I'd like to, to thank uh, Screen Australia who funded my, our project. I'd like to thank my screenwriter Jennifer Smith, uh, my composer. If you see the film, you know that the composing was a huge job. Uh, Jamie Messenger, my producer, Melanie Bronze. Uh, yeah, thank you all for, for coming. We've had great feedback, so thank you. I don't control the focus. It's a function of the lighting. And the winner of uh, the Best Animated Short, uh, we all, this entire jury loved. It's a beautiful, beautiful film. And that is Bear Story from Chile. <laughs> Uh, a statement of gratitude. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Osorio. I am an animation director from Chile, and I am really happy to know that you have enjoyed my short film, Bear Story. It is a film made with little money, but lots of heart. This short film is the result of over two years of hard work. Some of the best Chilean animators and artists came together to make it happen. I sincerely hope that Bear Story reminds the audience of their loved ones and their, signific and their significance in their lives. Thank you very much for this award. This award is a real honor for me and all my team. Thank you very much. I wish I could be here. She is reading that on behalf of the director. Your story is really amazing, and you will get to see it in a few minutes. Oh. Um, it's my pleasure to present the best documentary short. Um, the runner-up in this category receives a $500 cash award at Short Fest second place certificate. And the runner-up goes to Pebbles at Your Door. as well deserved. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm incredibly uh, happy. Uh, and uh, both on behalf of uh, myself and my main character is a very brave uh, North Korean woman and uh, my incredibly uh, small and incredibly <coughs> wonderful uh, team and thank you so much for hosting us in such a beautiful way here in Palm Springs. It's been <coughs> such a joy to be here and the audience here are excellent so thank you. <laughs> By the way the honey here in the background is the fan for the follow spots. winner of the Best Documentary Short uh, receives a $2,000 cash award and the Short Best Crystal Palm Award. And it's my great pleasure to present to a film of, of 
intimacy and great sensitivity and extraordinary timeliness. It goes to Pink Boy. <laughs> Yep, awesome. $2,000 prize. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, just thank you so much to um, Palm Springs Short Fest um, for this award and also just for this um, incredible festival that was very welcoming to me. And... Um, you know, it was an honor just to be here, so getting this award is just kind of icing on the cake. So thank you very much. I deeply appreciate it. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to move on to best live action short, 15 minutes and under. Uh, first, we have a special mention that the jury has chosen to award. Uh, to the film Ave Maria from Palestine and director Basil Khalil. The director isn't here, but we have Lisi Rofamaye, who is a script supervisor. If you'd like to come up for a moment. Uh, it's a standing room only crowd. is here, is taking the stage as we speak, as I speak. It's an incredibly painfully timely film, given the recent events in London uh, last week. <clears throat> it's a film I think, that reflects the deeply troubling times in which we live and the desperate lengths to which people go to find better lives for themselves. And so I'm incredibly honoured to have been able to share this film. So this prize qualifies this filmmaker to be considered for the Oscar for short film. the executive producer. <laughs> Jury, this is the Best Live Action Short Over 15 Minutes uh, Award. 
And the jury has chosen to award a special mention in this category to Brothers from the United Kingdom and its director, Thordor Palsen. The runner-up in this category of Best Live Action Short over 15 minutes receives a $500 cash award and the festival's second place certificate for the category. Our runner-up this year was Submarine from Brazil, director Rafael Arizal. And our winner in this category is The Good Life Over There from the oh, director Isaac Adi. There's clearly fans of the film, but evidently the filmmakers are not here. Twitter feed for all the clips of tonight's awards. special jury awards. At this point, I would like to introduce from Signal to Cloud Borders, Bijan Tarani, to present the expression of the Borders Awards. It's a great pleasure to be here. And I love this festival, and I can tell you that it resolved one of my problems in life. And I learned that there is nothing wrong with being short. <laughs> and um, we have two awards, both of them goes to things that are helping bringing people of our world closer together. And one of the awards is um, Cinema Without Borders, a special jury award. And the winner will receive a certificate to the Incentive uh, Investment uh, Activity course from the Strasbourg Theatre and Film Institute, the value of $2,000. And the winner is a film that uses the language of cinema in its best uh, to tell the story of two people who are supposed to be enemies. But by coming close together, they become <laughs> friends and partners in life and death. That film is uh, by an Iranian director, Tiam Yabandi, and the name of the film is Rangan 99. Tiam was not able to attend, but he sent a note for me to read it for you. I'd like to thank the Palm Springs Short Fest Film Festival organizers and programmers for giving me and my film the honor of being a part of this amazing film festival. Also, I'd like to thank Cinema Without Borders and the Lee Strasbourg Theatre and Film Institute for the special jury award. This award means a lot to me and my future in filmmaking. Today, from that Charleston church to the Middle East, the world has turned into a battleground. In Randon 99, I am trying to say that if we all had a chance to know each other, the end would not be coming with a bullet, but with a smile on, and a friendship. He was reading that on behalf of the award winning director who could not be here tonight. But our other work, the HP Bridging the Borders Award, that the winner will receive a Z Book 15 on workstation, a value of $3,000, goes to a film that uses a clever humor in a very funny story about conflict of religion and beliefs in order to show us that. Our common grounds can go beyond any uh, religious diversions that you may have. This beautiful film is Ave Maria. Second award for Ave Maria tonight. Director Basil Khalil received the award. 
you're supposed to have uh, uh, someone from the creative crew of the film, Lisa Roma, is, is she here? Okay, so we'll accept the word on behalf of the filmmaker, and uh, thank you. $60,000 to use uh, on the next film and to short pass a Crystal Plum Award. Please welcome from Panavision, Mike Carter. I think that the filmmakers are anxious at this moment. Tonight, this is the executive producer accepting on the film's behalf. events within events. The first one is that we were going to give a special jury citation to is Miriam Zohar for her performance in Paris on the water, the Israeli film. Yeah, it's really a remarkable performance which also goes to remind us what an important element the actor brings to, to our filmmaking. So I don't know, I don't think anybody's here to accept that. We'll accept that. So I'll get it to it. The second jury citation is, is for the remarkable cinematography which you just witnessed on August. <laughs> and, and that cinematography is by the director, Tomek Solseki, but he's not here, so we're gonna I, I think who's here? The, the producer's here, right? To accept it. Right, that's great. Mm -hmm. Now 
now we come up to the Future Film Makers Award, which is a prize, $2,000, and the, and the festival's Crystal Palm Award. Uh, the award goes to a filmmaker who the jury has the most feeling and hopes for that they will somehow have a career or a body of work that will be important and uh, will somehow add to the art of filmmaking and the film that we uh, <clears throat> that we talked about certainly in every department the director seems to have a strong feeling for working with actors great sense of cinematography, terrific sense of story, and uh, pulled it all together wonderfully. And so the Future Filmmaking Award goes to Rafael Adair for Brazil, from Brazil, Submarine. He's not here, he's not here. It's a terrific film, you yeah, have seen it's wonderful. And so I will accept that on his behalf. Now we are up to the Best Student Film Award from the U.S. Film School. The prize is $1,000, and that's courtesy of KQED of San Francisco. And a Cambridge package that's valued at $10,000. That's courtesy of Radiant Imaging, Images, Radiant Images. And the winner is, is Better in Italian, USA. <laughs> The director, the director is Jordan Lee. I think you can see it. For the viewers, send me a note and tell me where you're watching from. I'm so glad to be here, and thanks to all the filmmakers here, and getting to see your movies and being inspired by you and our audiences. Uh, it's just uh, the best gift ever. So thanks a lot. Now I'd like to ask the entire jury to, to come up, please, so that we can present the rest of the awards. Thank you. One row, please, go to psfilmfest.org for more information about this year-round festival. I say year-round, it has two major right, events, so we but have one more award grand, to give out annual for activities. Uh, and that is the Grand Jury Award. Um, I, I think some of the best films uh, challenge how you process information, whether it's uh, in the theater or once you walk out of it. Uh, and how the, the smallest details uh, end up being so important when you have the whole story in front of you. Uh, to start out from a point of simplicity and end in a point of complexity, I think that's all we can ask for in a film. Uh, and it, it is my pleasure to award the Grand Jury Award to Over. Uh, <laughs> speeches actually I said my bit uh, earlier I don't think I've got much more second award for tonight is, again I've come from London um, to a very special festival um, and it's certainly a highlight for me and I'm truly truly honored that uh, I've been awarded this um, <coughs> and I hope you get a chance to see the film if you haven't I hope it's an important film um, if you remember it the day after you've seen it then I think I've done my job thanks very much Um, I just want to mention that the, the prize for the Grand Jury Award 
with a $2,000 cash prize and short best crystal palm award. And now we get to the best of festival award. I know I speak for the entire jury. We were incredibly impressed with what we saw this year. You're an amazing group of young filmmakers, and we know we're going to hear a lot from you in the future. Picking the best is not easy. It's apples and oranges, but really delicious apples and very tasty oranges. We wrestled with this one, and the winner of the best of festival award is a film that spoke to us all very deeply and was made with incredible simplicity and subtlety, and I think we're going to be hearing a lot more from this director. The prize for the best of festival award is $5,000, courtesy of the Greater Palm Springs Convention and Visitors Bureau. Final cut prize, courtesy of Apple Computer, and the Crystal Award from the Palm Springs International Short Fest. The winner of this award may be eligible to submit their film to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for Oscar consideration. The winner is, from Austria, Carry On, director Raphael Haider. Thank you all so much, and I think we've got another movie treat for you coming up. For up to 24 hours, you can find all my short clips of the awards night here from my Twitter feed at the Nicholas Snow. Go to psfilmfest.org for information about the short fest in June and the feature fest in January. Audience awards and two special awards, uh, and here to join me on stage and present those awards. Please welcome our uh, incredibly talented programmers, uh, Helen Dutois and Laura Hennon. several years ago, seven years now, um, entered a film into the festival, uh, made the film at I I Idlewild Arts Academy right here uh, in the And uh, we were incredibly taken with the film. We invited him to the festival, and uh, he planned to come. He got on a plane uh, in the Far East where uh, he was donating his, his time and efforts to uh, the, the outbreak of a very severe uh, health uh, epidemic. Thank you. Um, and uh, he never actually made it to Palm Springs. He came down with uh, that same epidemic and died on the plane trip on the way home. We were so, again, impressed by his talent and, and hope that he could be an inspiration to other students, uh, both here in the U.S. Uh, and abroad. And so we've uh, uh, chosen to give this award ever since. Here to present the Alexis Award uh, is Lori Hedman. So first, let's start with the runner-up for the Alexis Award. Um, this film is a darkly entertaining, insightful, and complex multicultural story set in an, a European grocery store. The award goes to Christoph Saber for Discipline. Thank you, Zach, for the response to that win. Christoph is not here today, so let's move right on to the winner of the Alexis Award. Um, this director started with a very smart and savvy script and directed it with a clear and unique vision. The award goes to Thorana Sigurdadatter for Zelos.
never had a, won a trophy before in my whole life. So <laughs> my kids have a bunch of them for chess and soccer and ballet and whatever. But <laughs> thank you all so much. It's amazing. <laughs> Everybody, we are in the end zone, so don't worry, it's not going to be much this longer. Than that. Um, and also, I just wanted to take the opportunity to say to all of the many filmmakers who have come from all over the world to be with us, it's been such a pleasure getting to know you and such a privilege to watch your films. Thank you so much. Some of you may know that we have an online film festival competition as well, and those of you who don't, um, please check out the following film that won the best online short. It's The Dead Man from Peru. Oh, It's been a great week here. I'm seeing many, many great films to inspire me for keep working. So thank you all, filmmakers, and the Palm Spring International. with the jury, which does not always happen. So the runner-up for Best Animated Short Film goes to Alex Sue for the film Soar from the USA. And the winner of the Best Animated Short goes to Bear Story from Chile by Gabriel Sorbo. documentary shorts. So the runner-up in this category um, is a charming and enlightening glimpse inside the process of dubbing American films for foreign audiences. You've seen him up here before. Jordan Letty from It's Better in Italian. Parlo in italiano, grazie a tutti a Palm Springs, che bella città, ti amo tutti, ti amo tutti, grazie. And now our winner of Best Documentary Short. Uh, this film is a tremendous, shows the tremendous bravery of one medical team working through the Ebola crisis in Africa. From Liberia, the winner is Body Team 12. David Dark is not here, so we'll have his word sent to him. And finally, the award for the best live action short at the festival. <clears throat> um, it was a remarkable year for live action shorts at the festival. And uh, thank God we have both a jury and an audience to make these decisions for us. Uh, we couldn't agree more with both decisions on the, on the parts of both the jury and the audience, but the runner-up this year uh, for the best live action short is from Mexico, the USA, and the United Kingdom, Contra Pellet, director Gareth uh, Bennett, El, El Cursus. So, And finally, 
finally the winner for this year's best live action short audience award from France director Marc Fouchard the way of T be sure to follow me on Twitter at the Nicholas snow so you can uh, interact with my future Periscope broadcast. Check out NicholasSnow.tv, which is the short link to my YouTube channel. Check out my podcast, NicholasSnowLive.com, is where you can find everything I'm up to.